Okay, this uh, tutorial is for Tim O'Sullivan, who uh, has um, is actually doing a fantastic model of the Starship Enterprise, and um, he's having a little bit of trouble. Although I know he'd get there in the end on uh, actually doing this uh, fan section. Now there isn't a lot of reference that I've got to go on. I've just got this. Um, well, I've been told that this is the top of the fan, so this is this part. Yep. And this part here is the under part of the fan, which is down here. Now you can see it counter rotates, and um, he's having problems sort of getting this um, model to be correct on there. So I'm going to show you um, how to do that. I'm going to use Maya to actually model the fan blades, and I only need to do one section, repeat it around, and then move it down. So it's pretty easy, but um, still will require a little bit of thought. So. Uh, first thing I need to do is I need to kind of get this to be a lot better for what I need it to do and probably take that straight into Maya but I want to cut it out so I'm going to take this into Photoshop first of all take this into Illustrator and do it as vectors if you want to but I'm going to stick with um, this I'll do it um, using the pen tool in here so anyway here it is and as you can see, I'm losing detail when I move in, which is not a good thing. Um, so I need to back that up with looking at the model itself. And um, seeing there's sort of sharp edges going around, it's really difficult to see what's going on here, uh, especially with that top section. Um, this one's better. So you get that kind of counter, it's actually twisted. Down. that's a flat section I'm not sure it's supposed to do that um, but I think this is the one I go with it kind of goes down like that and then I've got these pullouts here now the main problem I've got with this so far is uh, the resolution of this is just not good enough I can't see what's really going on around here can match to this but I don't know if it's correct you know I don't know because I can't see it's pixelating I need a better quality image so I'm gonna hunt around on the internet see if I can find something that's a bit better for this um, inside fan area so give me a second all right well after looking around the internet didn't really find anything which um, is a bit of a shame so uh, doesn't matter I'll just take this in and do something and then hopefully uh, you can sort of uh, get yourself a better quality uh, image and uh, be able to work from that so let us have a look so first things to do is I'm gonna just crop this out into a square Put that in the middle, just put that little point in the middle. I'm going to put that in there. And let's control J to duplicate this layer. And hopefully, just let me just go back a couple here what am I doing history open okay let's just cut this out so crop this to a square something like that control X control X to cut it out control V to paste it back in uh, I want to put it over the top of this this is my general way of working so I need to line it all up uh, then did he? That's about right. Good. Okay, opacity back. Let's go and snip this out. This is the only bit I'm really worried about. And double click on that. So I've got both the top and the bottom of the fan areas in pro. Now, what I'm going to do is just export this out. I'm going to save this as and top fan and I'll just have to eyeball it as I'm working and I'll do it as a JPEG let's just save that 
and save the bottom of the fan save as fan base as JPEG and save okay that'll do right come out of that not going to save any of that stuff so in my folder now I've got these two reference bits now I need to set up my uh, Maya console so I'm just going to go into Maya and got Maya set up so I'm just going to go in and set a new project up for this so I'm going to go down to project window I'm going to go and call this new and we'll call it fan and I'll stick it in my enterprise folder select that I'll just leave the defaults and click accept okay so if you jump back into this now it's created this thing so I'm going to take these control X to cut them and I'm going to put them in source images control V to paste so they're in position jump back into Maya and create an image plane create a plane which is on the grid there you can see it there it's massive I'm um, going to put this down and put it to one by one like this now this has already got a flat UV if we look and go to Windows UV texture editor then you'll see that we've got a square in here and we if we right click on UVs you can see it's taking up all of that grid that means when I lay the texture on top it will be perfect so let's go into rendering now and just pick a Lambert and I'm just going to come into here now and select a file and you guessed it I'm going to select the top file so we're going to go top fan and pick that one I uh, need to turn hardware texture in on under shading just so that it shows on here this will now give us this image uh, and of course I'll swap it over when I do the bottom I'm going to bring that down notice if I press the space bar I can bring that that uh, thing down that means I can model on this surface here which is going to be a lot easier for us to to work on okay so with that set up I'm just going to go to save and we're going to call this fan and I'll just go in the scenes folder inside of your project and click save okay so that's saved and we're on to the next stage so uh, you'll notice that the hardware rendering you need to turn it on per thing and I want the top view here so what I can do is I can press F on the keyboard to zoom in and I've got that and now I can start to kind of put this uh, shape in here and start to work with it so we look we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve we've got twelve places around there let me just double check one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and we got one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve fans let me count the game one two three four five six nine ten eleven twelve so we've got twelve twelve of these fan blades that come off of this but i've only got to do one and i can duplicate it around and then we sort of make it match in the bottom so also remember here we've got uh, we've got a few bits here now i need to compare this to our images as well just to make sure I'm doing the right thing so I can see that I don't I, you know what I think that's wrong there's a gap between here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve yeah but my drawing shows them almost hitting each other so I don't know if that's wrong on this or wrong on that don't know don't know okay so I'll just go ahead and do something anyway okay so basically make sure you're in modeling come to mesh tools and we're going to create a polygon so with this I'm going to just start to trace out this part so I'm going to come in here and kind of trace around like this and I'm just clicking it on the grid and I think it's gonna go kind of here maybe here here and this is where oh there we go I'll just put that there and end it here by pressing enter 
So there we go. We've got a piece. I'm not sure if it's right. I can always go and move the vertices by selecting them and just kind of moving them off. And what I'm looking for here also is quads across here because I'll be quadding this little unit up a bit later. Okay, um, that looks quite good. I don't care about that too much because we'll probably hide it. Okay, that looks good. Right, so um, now I'm going to go in and I'm going to start to, I'm actually going to put this on wireframe on shaded so I can see this is a wireframe. And I'm going to go to edit mesh, mesh tools, and I want to use multi cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock it to the vertices. So I'm sliding it along and locking it and I'm pressing Y on the keyboard to repeat that operation. So what you're seeing I'm doing now is I'm actually quadding this up to quad it up obviously to quad it to quad it up and here to here and here now I've got a triangle in here but I'm not worrying about it too much um, that's gonna be good okay now I haven't got a side view so I don't know the angle in which it goes down so I'm gonna to have to look at that but um, before I do that I need to do some repeating around this and then join it to the piece so I'm gonna come in uh, to my polygon I'm gonna grab this little cylinder here and remember we counted how many pieces we need so I'm actually gonna put um, caps let's make it double 24 um, I don't want any oh, sorry 24 for that I don't want any caps there so let's now reduce this down let's put one cap in for now just so I can see press the R key reduce that right down and then press F on the keyboard and I'm looking to tie this up with this so that looks good okay now I'm gonna go to side view I'm just gonna to go to face and I want to delete out this area like that and notice I've still got that middle area in here but I can use this double click on it and I can bring this out or in depending on what I want to do okay now the next thing is I want to get this in line with this so we need to check that we're in line I know that's on the grid and that one's a bit too high so I'm going to center the pivot on this one I'm going to go to modify center the pivot I'm going to press the W key and on this I'm going to press the X while I hold the Y and it will snap down now I know I'm over position on that so what I need to do now is I need to join this to this piece here. Um, so what I can do is I can actually take both of these pieces and I can go mesh, combine. That'll make it one mesh. My vertices are still separate, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press hold the V key, I'm gonna snap it to that vertice. And this one here, um, I'm actually going to, sorry, I'm going to take that one. I'm going to snap it to this vertice, and this one I'm going to snap to that vertice, and this one I'm going to snap to that one. And this one I'm just going to move it slightly this way, like that. And notice that is no longer a triangle, it's a quad. So now I've got that little section done, what I can do is I, I have to weld these points together because if I click here and I move, you can see I can still move this one independently of the other. So I need to weld them. So I'm going to select over those points. I'm going to go to Mesh, Edit Mesh, and I'm going to go Merge. I'm just going to click in here and make sure it's set on a low setting, 0 0.0001, and I'm going to hit Merge. Now it will be one, it will be joined. So it'll be one vertice. Right, so with that done, 
and I know that in each section I need three. If you look at this, one, two, one, two, one, two, that's three. So what I can do is I can take the faces and I can just work with one section, like this. So now I can take this. Okay, so now we've done that section, I've hit this and I've made sure that this is in the center. Now the reason I want it in the center, if you press, if you press this, you'll be able to rotate it around that center point. If it's off center for any reason, just hit the insert key and then it allows you to move this around independently. Okay, so um, if you're moving it around independently and you lock it to center, hold the X key and just drag it, drag it down whilst holding the X key. Can be a fit and it will lock and then you hit the insert key again it's back in the center all right so what i want to do is i want to rotate this round so what i'm going to do is i'm going to press the control d okay that will duplicate the piece and i want to move it down till we're in line like this something like that then i can press shift d and it will repeat it so we're repeating that move and we're going to repeat that move until we get right back now this is um all pieces are separated now so what we can do is we can go into object mode, select them all, don't select the background there. And what we can do now is we can just, let me just check it's all selected. We can now merge that we can now combine them. So we combine them and I'm now gonna hit the vertex, drag across the vertex and remember we need to basically weld those points. So I'm gonna go into here, edit mesh and merge. And now if I press three on the keyboard, that's not giving me any errors, so that looks good. So that's our piece done around there. Okay, really simple. Now what we can do is we can actually use a lattice deformer to actually move it at that angle. Now, saying that, you could have twisted and moved it and then done your, um, uh, you know, done your, uh, duplications after we did this but I just want to show you sort of two ways so if you've got this piece selected if you come into the animations tab here you can actually use a deformer you can go in a lattice deformer and hit that and you'll get something like this but what we can do is we can go into the lattice and we can actually start to control the way that the divisions are working so I could take that there there's none in that so I want to go there let's put this down to three to three uh, no, actually a bit more let's go four to four okay see it's held that top part so what you could do now is you could you could select the lattice deformer and select lattice points and hold the shift key like this do, 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 do. Uh, whoops. Let me just go back. Hold on. And press the W. Now we can move this down like that. And notice that it's moved it. And I could also press the E key and I could counter rotate it or rotate it around on those points. So when you're happy with that kind of thing, you could then go, now these lattice points, you can still move them. Like if I delete the lattice object, it will jump back to what it was before. So actually to set this, what you can do is you need to delete the history. You need to go to edit, delete type, and history and then it'll still be there so then i pre can press the uh, e key oops sorry not the e key press the control e or extrude go to back to modeling tab go to edit mesh and we can extrude and we can now add a thickness to this so i can just bring this up like that and now i've got that thickness in there for that piece yep now the other thing about this is I could have, let me go back a couple here, um, take this middle ring, take these faces, 
and I could go into edit mesh and I could extract this out so I could go to uh, the mesh tools and I could go to um, Let me just edit, where is it? Uh, do, 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 Extrude, I'm looking for extract, oh there it is, extract. Now I've extracted this piece out the middle and I can press the W key, I can move it up like that if I wanted to. And then I could take this, press control E and then do our little split out like that. Then I could do an extrude on this piece put that up like that maybe make it a little bit bigger like that oh not on there a bit bigger there press the W key move that back in something like that and you get that kind of, or of course I could go in and do something else let's go back a few here let's go back until this is welded with that piece I could choose those faces there. Or I could just choose this whole pic. Oh, it's not part of it yet. Hold on. Go back. That's good. Control E, extrude. Extrude that out. Take these faces. By the way, these faces are triangles. You want to make sure they're quads. Uh, control E and I could bring that out there like that um, I could also insert an edge loop now, I'm just showing you this technique now how to do these sort of things but you know once you know it you know it and I could then go into faces here And control E, push that back in. Looks like I've got an extra face that hasn't been welded together. Did you notice that in there? That could cause problems. But you know what? It's no problem because you could just go in and delete half the faces out again as well. So generally just get the idea, that's how you can do it. That's how you can do that piece. The other piece that you've got down there, which is different to this, you can model that and then push that up into the right position. So I mean with this bit, for instance, if I wanted to counter rotate it and stuff using the same piece, I could press control D, press the W key. I could just come down here and what I could do is I could enter X into the Y, rotate it that way. And then I could rotate that on the X axis, 180 degrees like that. Press the W, bring it down in size, press the W, bring it up. And then you would get something like this. which is basically what you've got for the piece. So that's how you could do it if you wanted to. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you the same thing and we're gonna do a bit of a twist on it. So I've got the fan piece like we had it before and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my mesh tools and I'm gonna to go to create polygon and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this in here. I'm just gonna move this out. One there, one there, one there, one there, one kind of there. And I'm gonna go back. Um, I'm not worrying about if I'm hitting the right shape at the moment, because I can change that later. Hit the enter and um, right hand click vertexes and move those to where you need them to go. Yep, and once you've done that, click that, 
go to edit and we're going to cut it so edit mesh tools multi cut we're going to multi cut this press the y key to repeat the last action and there we go okay good all right now what i want to do now is i actually want to tilt this so i want to put a bit of tilt into this as it moves down so um So I'm going to grab the vertexes here on this edge, use the W key, I'm going to start to move this down. And then I've got this sort of thing. Now what I can do is I can actually raise this side up a little bit as well okay then I'm going to go and put my circle in let's just scale it down check the cylinder want uh, 24 on here um, I might want to put a cap on it like that scale this cap out Ooh, go to object mode bring this in yeah now this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cut through the middle of it so I'm going to go into the mesh tools, I'm going to go to multi -mut, mesh cut and I'm going to put a cut through the middle here. You just do wireframe unshaded. Let's stick to this edge. just make this the active object edit mesh mesh tools multi cut and hit enter so I've broken that up now so what I can do from the top view oh by the way I just need to come in and just delete all these faces out so right hand click faces just select over those delete them out select this object um, go to the move tool move center the pivot point modify center pivot point use the X key hold the X key snap it to the ground plane okay now we can move in here I can actually get rid of all these faces apart from the two so we're moving a bit quicker than we did last time so we got these two faces here good now what I want to do is I want to actually take both of these and make them one so I'm going to select both parts of the mesh I'm going to go into the mesh tools and I'm going to combine I'm going to hit the vertices and I'm going to use these to press in the V key to snap to these vertices and then I need to go and merge them as well we did this before so should be common to you go to edit mesh and we go to merge okay now we've got that and we've got that angle all sorted out yeah. And what we can do is go a stage further and say right okay well I want to um, start to put this down in the right position straight away and have control of it so I'm going to drag the first ones and I'm going to press the W key here and then I drag it down to the position I need it to be in so we drag it down like this we drag this one down um, drag this one down and say that's the angle that we need it to be at then we've automatically put that in there so then of course I can go into here and we can do our rotation and our duplication so I want to press the control D and I'm going to press the E on the keyboard and we want to move this round so it's right over the top of the other one like that I think it's 30 degrees in here so I need to set this to 30 degrees 
Then I'm going to press the Shift D and we should now have a good duplication of this. Good. Select across all of them apart from the image plane at the back and we're going to merge, merge combine. I'm going to go vertices. I'm going to select all the vertices. I'm going to go to the edit mesh and merge and now we have this piece ready to go. So obviously like if you want to put a few more little bits in here you could take this um, edge here double click it press the R key to scale bring it out I'm going to double click this one Ooh. double click this one actually sorry I'm going to put another insert another edge loop in right so I think you get the idea of what we're doing here so once you've got those pieces and you've merged all the pieces I just press free on the keyboard just check it's all good and then what I do is I'll go into this one and then I'll press the control E or you can go to mesh edit mesh and extrude and then I pull that up like or down like that and then you've got this piece And then of course inside of ZBrush or even inside of here, I could set another plane up. Let me have a look and um, change some of the settings in here to the thickness. Let's make it 0 0.2, actually 0 0.15. And let's just bring it down like this to get my ring, bring it in. I'm having a look at this now. I definitely need this less, so I'm going to put this 0 0.05. That's better. And of course, at this point, I could change these divisions so it's nice and nice and round. It's gone a bit weird there, but don't worry about it. Oh, hold on. Hold on, what's going on? Let me start again. Okay, that's because I'm not at my original size. Let's just up this now and put this thickness to 0 0.05, 0 0.02 and bring this down. It's actually a bit more than that, 0 0.8, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Okay, that's good. And I'm gonna bring them down. Ooh this when I hit the bottom part which is down here somewhere let me just double check go a little bit bigger with that something like that and then of course I could take this and I could take this into um, ZBrush. Yeah. And because I'm not worrying about um, you know different parts because we can combine this all, I'm gonna come in here and just do a combine. And then I'm just gonna do an export out. I'm gonna export selection out as an OBJ. So I'm gonna call this uh, fan top um, export and put it in my scenes folder and just export that uh, I'm going to turn material off smoothing off leave normals on the rest is okay and then I can open up uh, ZBrush so what I'm telling you here is um, you know what you can do with it with uh, inside of Maya so I'm just going to do the Dynamesh thing inside Maya so you can see what's going on and then I'm going to jump in to show you how you can do it in ZBrush Okay, so uh, ZBrush is open, I'm just going to hit the import. Uh, I'm going to go and find my enterprise files. Remember it's inside of the scenes folder. There's our OBJ, I'm just going to hit open to that. Drag it onto the canvas, go straight into edit mode. And uh, there's our fan there. And what I can do with that straight away is I can go in and I can just turn off smoothing and just divide it about up to level four. Then I can turn smoothing on and it will just sort of bring it together. Now I turned smoothing off to begin with, otherwise it would smooth it out too much. So I've gone up to about level uh, seven there. 
Um, of course, these are still two different components. Um, if I press the control shift, I could click on here and it would be, or I grouped it, it would be a different component. So as far as 3D printing can turn, that could cause a problem. So what I want to do is I want to go into Dynamesh now and just Dynamesh that out. So if I go into Dynamesh and I leave it on quite a high resolution, about um, 1000, and I hit Dynamesh with this model, um, would you like to freeze? I'm gonna click no. It will now Dynamesh this and it will become one unit. So if I go into the polyframe now, I know it's quite hard to see. Let me just put it into something like that. Let me just change the poly group color. still hard to see but it's because it's high resolution but it's welded these points which is exactly what you want so I come out of polyframe and now this is one unit that could be um, done you know could be used so inside here now I could come down to if I was using the same piece I know that the fans are different but just remember just I'm pretending it's a different fan so I could duplicate this one out now um, use the move I'm just going to move this up just so we can see and then what I can do is I can actually flip it around. So I could go to the, go into here. Let me just go into deformations, it's easier. And deformations, I'm just going to do a little bit of a rotate on the X axis, 180. And there we go. And now I can scale it and I can put this on negative one. So it's going the other way. Hold on, what am I doing? There we go. So put that in there. Bring the size down a bit. Bring it back out. And there we go. Let's click off this. And then we've got a counter rotating fan inside there. Put that in the gold. You know? So you get the idea. You can create this kind of object really easily inside of here. And then, of course, you could go into this object now and use masking to bring certain things out you could you could paint on this top surface like that and do inflations you know and all sorts of bits and bobs so you know but that's not what you wanted to know you want to know how to do that so mechanically we've done that so how would we do this if we were going in and just using zbrush so let me just um get out of this and do it using uh, ZBrush okay welcome back right let's do a fan using the um, ZBrush so I've put a drag to 3d plane out to make the poly mesh 3d um, let me just go back do yeah, that right okay so we got that so what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna go down to my texture well I'm actually gonna go to texture and I'm gonna import the top fan section that we've got in our Brooklyn Bridge um, Brooklyn Bridge sorry I was working on Brooklyn Bridge so I've got it on my mind um, <laughs> put it in the top fan uh, from the enterprise thing so we've got that in there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and grab that texture which is in here and I'm gonna make it an alpha so it's appeared in there so I can turn this one off so we've got an alpha in there so on this piece, what I need to do now is I just need to subdivide it up. We're going to use this as a reference, okay? So I'm going to turn smoothing off, and I'm just going to divide this up to about level 6 or 7. doesn't really matter too much. just need a lot of resolution in here. And now what we're going to do is we've got that in the alpha slot, and because this has been mapped flat, uh, if you're using a square plane, remember that's really important. Uh, we're going to go down to masking and we're going to mask by alpha so i'm going to mask by alpha hit the mask by alpha it will appear there and what i need to do is i just need to do a little bit of morphing on this um well deformation so i just need to go in here and just inflate it slightly and this will give me the guideline of where my fan is okay 
so in, in, important to know for later so that's my fan kind of look in fact I could probably do with a bit more detail on this so I'm actually going to get rid of the mask and pump a little bit more detail into this so let's just drag to get rid of the mask and maybe take this up to divide it to eight okay let's go back down to masking and let's mask by alpha now okay and let's try that deformation let's just inflate this slightly okay that's too much let's just inflate it by like two uh, not enough well, that might be all right I uh, know just inflate by two again Okay, that could be good enough. Right, now uh, I'm gonna come into the tools now and what I need to do is I just need to add something to it. So I need to go into here and I need to go to the Z-Sphere. Right, so that's there, got the Z-Sphere. So in the Z-Sphere, we're gonna go down to the um, rigging and we're gonna choose to select the mesh. We're gonna select this mesh. So that'll appear in there. And then I want to go down to edit topology and that gives us our background you can see that going on there what I can do now is I can click off I can start to make my piece up using the same sort of procedure that we used last time come down here come down here going to cross now to this so I'm creating my quads as I go and there finally there and I'm going to hit enter and that's good so I'm going to go and press the A on the keyboard under adaptive skin I want to turn the intensity down to 1 and I want the dynamesh level down to 0 I'm going to press 1 again that's better and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make that an adaptive skin so we've got that piece Okay, so under here now, I'm going to append that patch. There it is. Um, we're just using it for reference. And we're going to take this piece here. And let me just go sideways on this piece first. Let me turn that one on. I just want to move this down. So I'm going to just move it down just so I, it's visible. Whoa, hold on. Just need to get rid of the mask. Let's just move that up yeah it's not gonna hurt get rid of the mask and then move it down okay I can jump to a front top view again remember I've got perspective turned off as well so I'm gonna jump back up to this piece and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use arrays to create an array for this and then we're gonna pull it out before we do that we're going to extrude this piece here Okay, so to extrude the piece, we're going to use the Z modeler tool. I'm going to go over a face you can see there, Q mesh, and I'm going to make sure it's all polygons. I'm going to take this and I'm going to bring it up so I've got my depth. Now you can go up and down as much as you like, depending on your 3D printer. And we'll put it back in there. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to go to my um, adapt my arrays, and I'm going to create an array of this this piece now I could actually move it as well if I wanted to I can move it all in position um, and that might be a good idea at this stage so I can mask it off well turn the mask off here I can mask part of this use the move and I can begin let's just move a bit more to move it down, unmask it and move it up, unmask it and move it up again, unmask it and move it up one more time. So you get your angle that you want. 
Yeah. Um, if I want to twist the side, I could come in and mask certain parts of this out. So I'm just going over where those kind of vertices were. Sometimes it's easier to do it from the top. Oop, hold on. Let me go into draw mode. It's easier. Ooh, let me bring my brush size down. It's trying to mask everything. Uh, let me just turn this off for now. It's getting in the way. Now I can use move. Let me just reset this. And we can move that edge as much as you need to. So we've got that kind of thing. So you can go in and you can just budge certain edges up and down. So I'm selecting a corner and I'm inversing it by holding the control key and clicking once. So you can get it to pretty much the prof exact profile that you need. And then what I want to do is I want to turn this on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this pattern going all the way around. So to do that I'm going to go into the arrays. If I can find them. which is down here, array mesh. Okay, so we're gonna do an array mesh. Um, what we wanna do is we wanna do a rotation. So we're gonna rotate this around on itself. Make sure you've got the mask turned off as well. And we're gonna do this a repeat. And how many do we need? We need 12, I think. Um, that was the magic number. Let me just put 12 in here okay and um, we're going to start to spin this around the y-axis oh wrong hold on I always get this wrong when it 360 okay now I need to just um, change the actual offset. So I'm going to go to offset and I want to start to kind of push the, the offset out on this and the Z as well. Oh, not the Z, sorry. Boom. Oh, this is annoying me. Okay, that's better. That pivot point. So I'm trying to get this. Oh. So the pivot point is down. That's better. It might be better to come in here and type a number. 0 0.7, let's try that. Okay, 0 0.9. Let's try one. Okay, that should give us 12 blades. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's 12 blades. So we created our 12 blades. And there we go and that looks good so now once you've done that um, it's still an array mesh so you do have control and you can um, play around with that there's a lot more things you can do with an array mesh but if you want to set the array mesh because you're happy with it what you can do is make mesh and now it's made it a mesh you'll see that the options under array mesh have gone so that allows you to go in and do extra things so for instance if I wanted to append something like a cylinder I could go into the cylinder settings here
go under the um, initialize and we could have a cap we turn this on you can have an inner radius like that that'd be quite handy and I don't want maybe I want more I don't want divisions that way maybe I want more divisions that way for lots of detail and let's take the ooh, let's take this down it should be on a hundred so let me take this right down so it's a thin line that's good make poly mesh 3d come back into this piece that we created and append in the poly mesh 3d there you need to come in sideways go to rotate and I'm just gonna hold the shift key whilst rotating and uh, that's good and then I'll just use the move key to move this down and then I can scale it in so it's hitting move it up slightly maybe just a little bit more scaling there scale that that looks nice then I could duplicate this piece if I wanted to and bring it right into the middle and maybe move it up here let's give it a bit more nice then I could take another one I could just do an append and I could append another cylinder into the middle and scale it right down hold the shift key turn it bring this down into here you get the idea and then when you're happy with it all, what you can do is you can delete out that top blade because you don't need it anymore. Let's just delete it out, click OK. And this piece that all these parts are made up from, we can just merge them down. So I'm going to go down to merge and we're just going to merge visible. Oh, sorry, merge down. Merge down. Merge down. And it is separate groups, but remember we can then go in to our Dynamesh in here Dynamesh put this to a thousand hit enter and then Dynamesh it and there we go and we still got it in groups so I could still separate it out if I wanted to um, there you go but it's all dynameshed up to the same resolution. And then of course you can go around with your brush. Now also something to bear in mind, if you want to make some changes, remember this is 12 pieces and they're all even. So if I used a tool like um, Activate Symmetry and then I used the um, Radial Symmetry on this, what's going to happen, let me just show you. let me get the right one first oh no looks like I'm modeling on the Z so there so what I can do is I can set this to 12 and now we can change things at the same time if I use the move tool I can move things at the same time in exactly the same place all over the model and it's exactly the same so that's kind of a bashed up fan so you see the power of that being able to use that radial symmetry you can really go pretty crazy with it you know you can also mask out in the same place on each side so it allows you a little bit more control there 
And of course, when you finish with it, because it's Dynamesh, you can re-Dynamesh it and it'll make it all look nice. And then of course you can use smoothing over the whole thing as well to smooth the whole thing out. So we've kind of battered that up quite a lot, but you can see how we can quickly achieve these um, amazing effects using very simple tools inside of ZBrush. So Tim, I hope that has helped you. We covered quite a lot of things there. Obviously the um, quality of the reference images that you're doing these fans from will um, basically uh, allow for a better model because you'll be close, more closely uh, simulating that model. So if you've got side views and you've got top views, you know, that all the elevations that you need, then um, it's going to be a better model at the end of the day. But I've shown you how to do it in Maya. You could use uh, 3D Max to do exactly the same thing, work with the tools in Max. Uh, of course, you could take it all into ZBrush and do that masking thing and then trace it out using the retop and then just um, use the variety of tools we've got there. You can use multiple sub tools and then merge them all down into one and then do a Dynamesh to make it one mesh for 3D printing. So hopefully that has helped you um, with lots. I mean, that's not just with doing a fan. You could use that for lots of things. So it's a very cool technique to know and uh, you can do some great things using symmetry.